All right, I'm coming to you live now from my phone, which is a little bit different. I don't know. I don't know what's going to be better. So, anyways. so well, we're going to try this. We'll see how it works. I don't know why it wouldn't work on my computer, but it's working here. So, just give me one second. All right, so welcome back for the last um, video of the week, not the video forever, just of the week. Next week we'll come back together for our aquarium and then we'll go from there to see if we uh, have more time together the week after that. Um, for those of you who are new, uh, so first of all, it's hard for me to see um, comments now. I mean, I see them, but they're small. So I'm, I'm not going to be able to give out the shout outs like I normally would. So I appreciate you all being on here. Um, but for those of you who are just joining us, I am an art teacher at Lisbon Elementary. And prior to that, I was at Ilchester and Thunder Hill. And um, I also used to work at the zoo, which is why I love animals and why we're doing zoo animals for this first project. Um, I'm also wearing this really cool bracelet today. Yesterday I was I shouted out about my earrings. Today it's my bracelet. Um, it's a friend in North Carolina. Her website is sweetcountrystyle.com. You can go to her website. You can also go to her Facebook page. And I just love it. It makes me feel like Wonder Woman. So, great bracelet. Okay, so today... Oh, also this is not curriculum-based artwork. This is not nothing that's graded just for fun, just a way for us to stay socially connected while we are quarantining at home. Okay, so today we're going to do four animals to wrap up our zoo. I only had three more spaces on my map, so I just chose the three that I wanted to do. Um, but if you're making multiple pages, multiple maps, or a booklet or something, then you can draw all four. But we'll just do um, you know, our practice drawing like we've been doing. So we're gonna start with, as requested, a tiger. Um, and the tiger is the largest feline species. Um, in the wild, it eats deer and wild boar, and they generally hunt at night. In the zoo, it's a little different. They do not need to hunt. So they are given a variety of meats um, at certain meal times. So they don't need to, they're not necessarily fed at night. Um, the babies, our cubs stay with their mom for around two years. So they do stay together as a family um, until then, the in two years, that's when the, the young adult, I guess, goes off to find his own, create his own family. And they're found in Western and Central Asia. Um, and so when you're making your um, zoo map area, you're gonna need to make sure your uh, tiger has plenty of room for roaming around. Um, I actually found that their closest relative in the cat family is the snow leopard. It was originally thought to be the lion, but it's actually the snow leopard is their closest relative. And they are striped, and uh, those stripes provide camouflage in the wild and long grasses because they sort of have the colors of light and shade and the stripes are like the grasses, so it's hard for a predator to see them. Um, males can get up to 12 feet tall and 675 pounds, and females can be about 9 feet and about 370 pounds, so a great deal smaller than the male. Um, and I have a fun story about, well, I don't know if it's so fun. It wasn't so fun at the time, but it's funny now. I was at the Baton Rouge Zoo in Louisiana when I was a kid. Um, my parents grew up in Louisiana. Um, so I we went to the Baton Rouge Zoo, and I got a little too close to the tiger cage and the tiger peed on me. <laughs> so that was a real fun, memorable trip. Now I can laugh about it, but at the time it was pretty devastating. Okay, so let's do our tiger. Now I'm gonna see how best I can do this. Uh -oh. Oh, I can't turn my phone while recording, it says. Okay, so I'll just have to hold it, I guess. This is gonna be weird. All right, we'll do our best, right? Improvise. All right, so we're gonna start with an oval. 
this. Hopefully we're seeing this okay. It's really hard for me to see on this phone. And then you're going to make a circle that connects the two sides of the oval. And this is gonna become the head. And then we're going to add the ears. Um, and then we're going to add eyes and the pupils. It's gonna little, look a little bit like our cow well, that turned into a zebra but it'll look like a lion, I promise. Then at the top of the oval you initially drew, you're gonna do a, a, saw, or a rounded triangle. This becomes his nose. Then you're gonna create the mouth. And cat, so he needs those whiskers. We got the little insides of the ear. And of course, to really give him a tiger head, he needs some stripes. So stripes come off the side. And on, on the top. Now he looks like a tiger, not a cow or a zebra. We are doing a tiger for some people that just joined us. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the body. We're gonna draw the front paws first. And it's sort of like making a capital A without the top part, if you're doing like a block letter. So I'm gonna draw it first and then hold it up so you can see it. Okay, and then we're gonna make a circle that goes behind her, I guess an oval that starts at the head and goes behind it here and down in front here. And we're gonna do the front paws, which are just gonna be ovals. And you wanna probably erase these lines right here. Oops, my paper. And then the back legs are gonna come off the side. And of course a tiger needs a tail. So it's gonna come off the back here. Now we need to add all the things that make it look like, it does look like Garfield. <laughs> um, all the things that make it look like a tiger, all the stripes that we need. So add some tail stripes. Some leg stripes. Some front leg stripes. And of course, when you color this, you wanna make sure you're really using that nice orange color. Well, that's not true. If you wanted to make it look like an actual tiger, you would use orange. Well, like I've said all week, you can make it whatever color you want. Make it a rainbow tiger. So there's your tiger. All right, so now we're gonna move on to lion. And of course, shout out to the Lisbon lions and the Howard lions, Howard lady hoops. Um, 
Okay, so the lion, of course, is also a feline. And it is, um, the males are known for their mane, their big mane. The females do not have that. Um, but so you know a lion based on the mane, and that's um, really what they're known for. And they have a little tuft at the end of their tail. Sort of looks like a paintbrush. We talked about that yesterday with one of our other animals. Um, they live in grasslands and savannas, so they need lots of room to roam in your, um, when you're putting them in their environment. And they're very social. They live in prides, as we know that from the Lion King and Pride Rock. Um, the females are the ones that hunt, and they bring the food back to the family. And they are mostly found in Africa, and at the Baltimore Zoo, that's the section of the zoo that they are found in. And in the wild, they eat zebra, buffalo, giraffe, and warthog. And actually, at the Maryland Zoo, their, um, it's not a cage, their environment is actually right next to the giraffe environment. But I don't think they can see each other, and they definitely don't have access to each other. But I just thought that was a little ironic. <laughs> in the zoo, they don't eat those animals. And in the zoo, they are fed beef and beef bones to chew on. Um, and in the wild, they compete with uh, spotted hyenas for their food. And a little fun fact about lions is they say hi by nuzzling their head against another lion's head. That's their way of saying hi to each other. All right, so we're going to start our lion. Oh, hi, Sam. <laughs> That's how I had it before, I don't remember. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna start with an oval shape for the head. And the first thing we wanna create is that um, iconic mane. And it just goes around. You can make some of the um, pieces longer. You can make it very symmetrical if you want to. It's kind of hard for me to draw with one hand, but there you go. Now we're gonna add the front legs. And it's similar to how we did the tiger, but a little bit more round, a little bit more muscle. My one leg got a little wobbly, that's okay. Then we're gonna add the front paws. And again, you wanna erase these lines right here. And then the back legs. Sorry, yes, I'll slow down. I'll let you get caught up. It's kind of hard to hold a phone and draw at the same time. <laughs> Put it down for a second. Okay. So now we've got our basic lion body. We're gonna work on his face. So we're gonna give him some ears. And the eyes like we've been doing. We're gonna do that upside down triangle nose. <laughs> it's getting a phone call. And then
the mouth. And we've got to do a little hair on the top of his head. And what is the one thing I forgot to do with his body? Anybody notice? Yes, Sam. Tail. Tail. Yes, I forgot the tail. Sam is watching. He's not participating. He's just watching. Remember I said paintbrush at the end. And then we've got to do little things to show his paw marks. Hard to see on the one because I put X's on. I'm sorry that you can't see when I'm drawing. It's hard with the phone. I'll try to do better when I do that. Yes, tail, you got it. <laughs> it's hard to hold this phone up at the right angle. So I'll hold this up for a minute. Sorry, I apologize if it's not a great feed. It's coming from my phone. I could not get the computer to work. I don't know if it's finally catching up around here that everybody's online, but I could not get um, I couldn't get the live video to work on my computer. Okay. Next one we're doing as uh, many requests is a llama. So the llama um, is found in South America, but originally it originated in North America and then gradually migrated down to South America. And then if you find them here now in the North America and Canada, it's because they're imported in and they're general, generally raised on farms. Few of them are in zoos and they are related to the camel, except they do not have a hump like a camel does. They can get up to be about five feet tall and live 15 to 25 years. They can be white, brown, gray, or black, or of course you can make them any color you want. In my final that I did, I made my llama pink because I wanted to. And they do sometimes spit on each other. That is, you know, something that they say. I don't know if anybody watches, has watched The Emperor's New Groove. That's one of our favorite movies here at the Gyro House. Um, and they do talk about them spitting in that. Um, and they also talk about it in Aladdin as well, I think. Maybe that's a camel. But anyway, yes, they do spit, especially at each other if they're mad at each other. They're very social and they um, travel in a herd. So you can create more than one in your environment. And they eat both in captivity and in the wild. They eat tall bunch grasses, so the really tall grasses that grow together, or small shrubs, or in, the, in a zoo or a farm, they would eat some hay. So we're gonna draw our llama. Let's see if I can do a better job this time. I guess it's probably because of the lighting. My phone is blocking my direct light. Okay, I'll do my best. So we're gonna start, when we're drawing the llama, you wanna sort of make a squiggly line because they're very fluffy. So we're just gonna make a, a line when you're drawing, I'll do it first. But a line that's like, like that. Very squiggly and bumpy. You don't have to do that, I was just showing you how to do it. So when we're making a llama, we're gonna start with the head and we're gonna actually we're gonna start with the neck and we kind of go up and around i do not like the way that looks i'm going to redo it
got a little too, too bumpy. Like my llama had just gotten a, a fresh perm. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the neck down to the body. And then around the front part, we'll add the front part of the body. You can make it a Fortnite llama if you want to. The loot llama. I'm giving mine a little bit of a belly. Now we're gonna add some ears. And the ears are just triangles that go in the front and back of the head. If you want to erase the line, you can. All right. Now we're going to add the face. For a second. Okay, I'm going to pause it or stop here just for a second. Let everybody get caught up. That's true, if, if I'm going too fast, it's probably because this is not the, the easiest way to do this today, but the video will be posted on my site or on my page as soon as I'm done. So you can always go back and watch again and pause it when you need to. So the next thing we're going to do, I'll talk about it before I do it, is just add the legs. You're gonna have two legs that are front, meaning they're closest to us and then two that are in the back. Here, so I have to hold it. So I'll hold it up for a minute. All right, so then our last one, and I'll go really slow with this one because I thought this one was the hardest for me. The last one is a meerkat. Several requests for a meerkat. Um, um, if you're having trouble with the body and you're using a pencil, just Start by drawing it um, with a regular pencil line, nice and light, and then you can go over it with the squiggly line. Sometimes trying to draw that body shape 
And also think about making the lines squiggly can be a little tricky. So if you just do a light sketch, and I would do it here, but you wouldn't be able to see it on here. Um, if you do a light sketch of the body outline and then go back in and do your squiggly lines, that'll help. All right, so the meerkat um, is a small mongoose and they are from South Africa and they live in groups. And I thought this was interesting. A group of meerkats are called a mob or a gang. So they sound like they're really tough little guys. Um, so a mob or gang, um, they live in the wild that way. And of course in zoos, there's lots of them together. In the zoo, they can live 12 to 14 years because they're well protected from predators. But in the wild, they only live six to seven years. They're about 10 inches, so they're pretty small little guys. And they have a really long tail that actually helps them as a leg when they're standing upright. So they kind of use it for balance to keep them upright when they're standing up. You know they like to stand up and keep lookout. They um, are burrowing animals, so they burrow um, little tunnels, that's where they live in the underground, but then they have some that stand watch and they take turns standing watch so a predator doesn't come. Now a predator's not gonna come in the zoo, but they still have the instinct to stand watch and make sure that everything is under control. Um, and they're, what they eat is they're insectivores. I didn't even know that was a word, so I learned that. Um, so they eat insects, but they also eat lizards and snakes and spiders. Now that's all in the wild. In the zoo, they eat mealworms and crickets and cat kibble, so cat food they give them. Um, so that's a meerkat. And I, I've seen people ask about Hank. He has not come in here. Um, he sort of seems down today. So we'll see if he comes in. If he comes in, I'll pick him up. Um, all right, so our meerkat... Like I said, this one, I put, I misplaced my pen. There it is. I found the meerkat to be the most difficult just because it's awkward and, you know, it's not something you typically draw. Oh, wait, here he comes. Hank wants to say hi. Come here, Hank. Come here. Jack went and got him for me. Oh, here he is. <laughs> there he is. Can you say hi? <laughs> He's looking at Jack. What are you doing? Are you sad today? It's going to be a nice day. We can take you for a walk later. Can you say hi? No? Oh, very sleepy. He needs to go back and take a nap with Ziggy. Okay. Here I go. I also forgot to point out my shirt that I'm wearing today. I wore a flamingo for you flamingo fans. And it also says weekend mode for all you parents. Not that the weekend really means anything right now. Still the same thing we'll be doing that we've done every day. And we can just sleep a little bit more. Okay. So the meerkat. We're going to start with a more circle-y oval. It's not quite a circle and it's not as flat as an oval. And you can give, go ahead and give him his crescent-shaped ears off to the side. He doesn't really sleep much. Okay. Also zoom you up. Okay. And then we're gonna do a, a smaller... Are you ready? That's not true. We're gonna go ahead and give him eyes. So you want to do not, you don't want to make the eyes too big because we're going to put um, markings around the eyes. They usually have a darker marking around the eye. I'm going to just color it in with my marker. They're, usually these markings aren't black, just a darker version. So maybe a darker brown. Um, but if you're making a pink meerkat, you could do a dark pink around the around them. And we're gonna add that upside down triangle nose and do two lines from it back up to the eyes. Okay. 
right now it looks like a beak, so let's go ahead and add the mouth. Okay, so now we're gonna add the body and we're drawing this meerkat standing upright. So we're gonna give him a little bit of a neck and then a long oval body. They sort of stand with their arms, arms hanging down. You want to erase those lines. Mine's going to look really weird because I can't erase those lines, but you would erase those lines of the body. Now we're going to add a little patch for his stomach. So it's sort of like he's holding his belly a little bit. Now he's, we're going to add the legs. Their legs are skinny and they sort of stand up. And they have a little foot at the bottom. And you can see because their legs are so skinny Mine could probably be a little longer, um, but you need that tail to help it. <laughs> Darby Dove calling for some super swans. I love it. Um, you need that tail to help him stand up because right now he'll fall right over on those skinny little legs. I think we are going to try to draw Hank as part of our farm if we're still home in a couple weeks. Um, Ziggy is our other dog. So my students know Hank and Ziggy are my two dogs. So I have three sinks in my art room and then each sink is named after a dog. So Hank is one of them. Ziggy, here. Oh, I lost him. I had him and I lost him. Ziggy is our other dog. And he is a pit bull mix. And uh, my third sink is Frankie's sink. And Frankie is my niece and nephew's pug. And he's a black pug. So they are, Frank and Hank are half brothers. So there is our meerkat. And mine looks really strange with those lines still there. But I would really like to see some uh, crazy color meerkats. Because meerkats are kind of funny looking anyway. So you can really change it up by making, I don't know, a purple meerkat with pink around his eyes. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you my, oh, that's first day. My final tiger. Oh, I just realized on the phone everything's backwards. I don't think it was backwards on the other one. And llama and lion. I did not do a meerkat on my final because I ran out of room. Remember I said it? Oh, I did a pink llama. And here's my, my original. So 
so funny that it's backward. All right, so somebody's back. Come here. Okay, now I just ran away. Um, so what we'll plan to do is next week, um, so take the weekend off. But you can keep drawing, keep creating over the weekend. And then on Monday, we'll be back to draw to start our aquarium. And I haven't quite decided how we're going to do that yet. <laughs> Whether we're going to make... Um, another map style like we did here. I have another way, another kind of interesting drawing that we might do that in incorporates aquarium animals. So I'll think on that over the weekend. That'll be my assignment. And then we'll get back together at 10 a.m. on Monday. And I've made lots of notes about what you want to see in your aquarium. So if you, there's something you want to see, definitely got that bl uh, blob fish. We'll definitely have, um, have him. That was a big one. So if there's anything you want to see or draw, just make a comment or put it on my Facebook wall. If anybody wants to post pictures, that would be awesome. I love seeing them. Um, and have an amazing weekend. Enjoy the warm weather today.